On today's show, what is an all-in trade that the Dallas Mavericks could do right now? We'll tell you the answer on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks NBA champions. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. The best way you can help us grow the show, listen to the show, be part of the Raccoon Squad, or comment anything below let us know who would you go all in on right now two first round picks josh green Jaden hardy salaries christian wood whatever you th- those are the mavs assets who would you go all in on right now this episode is brought to you by fanduel sportsbook official sportsbook of locked on make every moment more visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started and joining me as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The all-in incredible incel. The one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? Um, question think, for you. Couldn't think of a good I noun for that one. <laughs> um, what did you think about the NBA announcing that the all-star team draft is going to happen right before the game? I love it. Televised playground rules. Let's go. Love it. Okay. I love here's that. My, here, but here's my thing. Give them like, you, you know, pennies, the jersey. Remember the jerseys from like gym class or <laughs> this is what I got to, I, I got to know though. I think it's only going to be fun for me if they're all on the floor. Yeah. If it's if it, like, if it's recorded, if it's recorded and it's like, then they come out. You got to be able to see everybody's expressions on their faces. Like exactly. All the players. Yeah. That's with the only you. benefit of having. Put, make them stand at half court, and it's like, you, come over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That and, would be incredible. And content. they're all mic'd up. Can we get them all mic'd up? It's the all-star oh, game. Why not? No, Can we yeah, get them all mic'd no. up? That would be awesome. Can you have that many mics? LeBron chooses Kyrie, and Kyrie's like, oh, mother. Mm. <laughs> He's like all mad to go back. <laughs> Uh, like Giannis has to choose James Harden or something, somebody that he's gone after the vast. He's like, oh. Luca would be at half court again. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> yeah, Luca doesn't care either way. He's like, anybody. He's, he's cool. With everybody. Bonus. I'm cool with everybody. It's a bonus. Like, oh, I'm going last again. <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> the interesting thing is, there's going to be all the reserves there too. So, like, yeah, the reserves will already be on their side, right? Or do they just, or they pick the whole team? No, they have to pick the whole team. Okay, they're not doing just starters. Yeah, no, the whole team. That that's great. Love that. Uh, on today's show, we're an- we're answering some big trade deadline questions. We got some big ones. What is an all-in trade the Mavericks could do? What is a realistic trade that you don't want to happen for another team? That's a great one. What's a desperate type trade for the Mavs? If the Mavs make this type of trade, it would signal desperation to us. Uh, we'll talk about other guys around the league, and then you know. What's a, we'll share some of our Mavs takes that we think we're in the minority for. Like, uh, you know, we don't think everybody believes this, but we kind of believe it. So, yeah. All right. First question. What is an all in trade? Both picks. So let's talk about the Mavericks uh, assets. I had somebody DM me recently, but like who, what are the Mavericks assets right now? Great question. Mavericks, a- McGee. Mavericks assets right now. Two future first round picks, 2027, 2029. If they figure out some way that the Knicks would agree for the Mavericks to remove their like restrictions or remove the protections on their pick for this season, then the Mavericks could trade 2025 as well. And then that would be 2025, 2027, 2029. But very unlikely that that never really happens. I don't think the Knicks want to do any the Mavs any favors right now <laughs> for sure either. Nah. Um, and so it's two first round picks. It's Josh Green, Jaden Hardy. Uh, you have a couple of expiring contracts that don't meet a ton in the NBA anymore, but it's still for salary purposes. Like it's not a negative asset. Christian Wood, 14 million expiring. You have Dwight Powell, 11 million expiring. Um, Reggie Bullock has a non guarantee next year. So he's kind of, um, and then, yeah. And then you got some players, Dorian Finney Smith. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Spencer Dinwiddie maybe. Tim Hardaway's on a little bit of a long contract. I mean, then we're, you got we're, some players. We're running out of um, we're running out of some stuff here. But that's the that's what we're looking at as far as assets for the Mavericks. But what's an all in trade? I, I heard you got some, so I'm ready to hear yours. 
I mean, do you have some smaller ones? Mine's pretty complicated. I got some players. Okay, so an all in. I think I think I would go all in for DeRozan right now. Oh, I actually like. I think I, I think I there's would. some bull stuff that I would be interested in. I think I would look at what I think I would look at DeRozan right now and be like, are are the Mavericks getting anybody better in the off season? Is the is the is the guaranteed best fit that we've been waiting for for three years since we realized the Porzingis trade wasn't it? Is there going to be that player available this summer, or or is that player going to be better than DeRozan? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if that player. Zach Levine is another one I wrote down. That one I'm a little more iffy on. The the money that contract scares the crap the money out of is a, a lot of the same things we talked about with Brad Beal yesterday after the Wizards game. Yeah, really long contract. He's injury prone. Great player, like yeah, as as, as a player, but with all the stuff included, like I don't know if I would go in all in right now. Siakam, hundred percent. That one I don't think the Mavs even get it done with with their picks right now. Yeah, um, Jimmy Butler. The Heat decide, hey, I don't, know, I don't know if we want to do this anymore. They're, they're playing good basketball right now. So they, are, would, they are now. That one doesn't really. Um, yeah. Would you do Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant together? For what? For the two picks and whatever salaries. That's really enticing. I like Simons a lot. I know. But if the if the Blazers are like we got to re, we got to retool around this right now we need to we need to get some more picks and maybe they I don't know if, maybe, I don't know if Dame could handle that maybe they're like all right let's bring in let's bring in Dinwiddie and retool around Damian Lillard right now we need a, we finally need a bigger guard next to Damian Lillard <laughs> <laughs> uh I would be th- that one's intriguing to me I'd listen yeah that one's an interesting one throw in Shaden Sharp no just kidding. My last one is um, the Miles Turner Terry Rozier combo. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'd give up both picks for that though. No, for the combo of getting both Miles Turner and Terry, it literally fills the two the two holes the Mavericks have right now. Yeah, two, I don't know if I'd oh, give so hold up. on. Sorry, sorry, reverse. Two of the holes the Mavericks have right now. <laughs> there's oh, there's okay. probably not only two. I'm like, let's watch the phrasing a little bit. I think of um, the, the Jimmy Butler one's probably the least likely that it actually like becomes uh he becomes even available but of the guys that we've heard of that are kind of floating around and available right now i think those are the ones i would go with yeah i mean i think i'm a little higher on og than you are I have og and fred written down i just have question marks next to him you have more question marks about fred and og than you do miles turner and Terry Rozier. yeah but if i'm getting two players instead of just the one Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Let me throw at you a four-team trade. Ooh, it's about to get complicated up in here. You know I love doing this. Um, <laughs> spend some time on this. All right. Mavericks get Fred Van Vliet okay. and Boyan Bogdanovich. All right. Lakers get Nerlens Noel, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Gary Trent. The Raptors get Westbrook. Both first from the Lakers and one first from Dallas. Mm. And the Pistons get Tim Hardaway Jr., Thad Young, and a first from Dallas. So the Mavericks give up. The Mavericks get Fred Van Vliet and Bojan Bogdanovic. Great, yeah. great get for the Mavericks. What Obviously, are, you would you would pay, you know, Fred Van Vliet long term money. What are what are the Mavericks giving up? Dinwiddie, Tim, and both first. Okay. For Fred Van Vliet and Bojan Bogdanovic. Oof. It's tough. I don't think I do that. I don't think I do that. I know. I'm not in love with it. I didn't like finish it. And I was like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not in love with it, but the concept of, and I tried to land on those names because they've been talked about a lot. So it's like, I wasn't just like randomly picking out players. I was like, is there something yeah, there? Like who's available? Um, the concept of it, though, is, you know, Westbrook goes somewhere. It's going to take the first. If the Lakers are giving up the first, you know, are are they happy with Dinwiddie, Trent, and Nerlens as the return on that, giving up both their first for those three guys? That's a pretty good um, get for them, though. Although, I think it is. Although they yeah. pretty much only have guards, so. <laughs> I guess the question is, if Dallas swapped out Dinwiddie and Tim for Fred Van Vliet and Bognatovich, are are you putting them in the finals? 
Dinwiddie's played so well. Like they're not. I don't think they're going to the finals. Fred Fred Van Vliet hasn't played. Like, I think Dinwiddie's playing better than Fred Van Vliet right now. I think Van Vliet is a better player, but I think Dinwiddie's playing better than Fred because Fred's having a really bad year. If if they, I have hesitation about this long term in the picks and all that stuff for you know a little older, kind of older players. If they made that trade right now, I would I would put them in the finals and feel confident. Man, okay. So you're so then is so in this deal, your rotation is. You're starting Luca and Fred. Yeah. You're starting Dorian probably. Boyan. Oh yeah, Boyan, Boyan, Dorian, and Wood. That's like your starting. Yeah. And then you got Maxi, Josh Green. What else you got on the bench? <laughs> Javel. <laughs> There's just a little. I mean, you got. I mean, you still got Reggie. You still got the re, you know the rest of the roster at that point. It's just. I mean, you're swapping out Dinwiddie and Tim for Van Vliet and Bog, Boyan. I don't know so, if that's a big enough leap for me. I'd put him in the finals. I'd feel confident in that. I just have really big hesitation moving forward. Like that's your there's no second star swing at that point. But I think yeah. this year, you, I, I'd say the there is no second star swing. But you could still next year and then the year after that, you could you could make your like, all right, we're trading one first for a guy that fills a hole, right? Like all of a sudden you can you can do that next year when those picks become available, right? So yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's an interesting one. Let us know in the comment section below what you think about that trade, what you think about some of these deals, who's an all-in player or an all-in deal you would do right now with both firsts and all that. Coming up, let's talk about some deals we don't want to see happen and what would be desperation for the Dallas Mavericks if they made this deal. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. If you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. There are so many great features that make betting on sports easy and fun. It's our new partner, new betting partner with Locked On. You can go check it out. Get a hundred and fifty dollars in free bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet. Just place a five dollar bet, get one hundred fifty dollars. Go to uh, FanDuelSportsbook.com/slash Locked On. Go check that out right now. They have all kinds of different things you can see at the moment. All right, they have. Let's do Defensive Player of the Year. Who do you think's number one? Give me the number one player on FanDuel. Walker Kessler. <laughs> not even, not even listed. No, Brooke Lopez. Walker Kessler is not even listed. Not even plus 50,000. <laughs> uh, Brooke Lopez plus 850. Number one, Jaron Jackson Jr. minus 210. That's a great one. Uh, so wow. Jaron Jackson Jr., the favorite. Brooke Lopez, pretty far distance behind him. Nick Claxton plus 850, tied with Brooke Lopez there. Bam Adebayo plus 1,500. Giannis plus 2,100. OG plus 2,600. Draymond's there, Embiid, Mobley. So interesting odds there. They have all kinds of stuff, not just NBA. You can check out NFL for the upcoming uh, conference championship games. Who did? And uh, college as well. Check it all out. It's FanDuel. Use the promo code or go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Isaac Harris. Let's move on to some more questions. You gave me a list of questions. They're all great. We asked... Who's, what's a all-in move you'd want to do in the first segment? Let's talk about a realistic trade you don't want to see happen for another team. <laughs> that was great. That was great. God, this one kills me. If Memphis pulls off OG, I'm going to I have that cry. exact same, one. <laughs> same thing written. It's just a perfect fit, and it would piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I It's just that they have the assets to do it, and if they can pair OG with Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, and John ja Morant... Oh. I might put them in the finals at that point. <laughs> yeah, I think I might too. They have I mean, it, yeah. they have their own pick this year. Yeah, no, they have they have their own they have all their picks. They have all their picks. Yeah. They cool. have a they have a Golden State like protected pick coming their way too, which is what makes I think it's from the Iguodala thing. Yeah, but but they have all their own picks. So they they could trade any number of picks to make it happen. And wouldn't uh, that just piss you off? It would. I I have OG going to the Grizzlies. Also, the Pelicans, that one would make me mad, too. I don't know his fit there. I'm kind of confused by that one. Like, is he playing the two with Zion and Ingram healthy? At, like, I mean, Does it matter? Does it matter? Like, you're just, you're just throwing out, like, this is, the, this is the Jason Kidd. You're a basketball player. Like, that's the, that's the goal right there is just throw out CJ McCollum, Ingram, Zion, OG. Then you can either go Jonas as the big or Fred, or uh, not Fred, Herb Jones as the... Other like all of a sudden you just have a whole bunch of wings that can just do different things and I mean you're defending at a super high level then. Yeah, 
Another thing, it's this is more about a team than it is a player. If the Lakers pull off something <laughs> dumb with with Westbrook and the first, I'm gonna stop you right there. Yours is if the Lakers pull anything off. You were pissed off when they got Rui Hachimura the other day. So if the Lakers yes. do anything at all, like if they make any kind of movement, you are mad. Yes, if they if they pull some Pau Gasol crap and <laughs> turn, you know, because. It would be something NBA Lakers thing for for us to get a Woj notification. It's like Lakers trading Austin Reeves, Westbrook, and two first for Damian Lillard. And it's like, <laughs> are, are, seriously? Like, what are we doing? So I just don't want them to get anything good back. And then we're talking about them the second half of the season. And it's the whole like, then they're like, that's another team that could be better than the Mavs. I just, that would piss me off, man. My other one was any stars that could move early. So, like, a team decides, all right, l- let's let's start our rebuild now instead of waiting for the offseason. The the Jimmy Butler, the Zach Levine, the DeRozan, the Siakam. The Trey Young. I mean, yeah, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray again. Like, if they decide to, all right, let's just let's do it now instead of waiting till the offseason, that would, and the Mavs miss out on that. Because the Mavs either don't have enough assets right now, or that's good. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that one. That one would really make me mad. Because then it's not all the time. It's like stars have moved a lot, but it's not every off season four or five stars move. The Mavericks are going to really have to hone in on whoever is going to be that one that moves and and pounce on that. So it'd be funny to see Trey go to New York and be like, "Hey, can you play with Jalen Brunson?" <laughs> be like the weirder, like bizarro Donovan Mitchell signing that they should have just made. <laughs> Or does Donovan Mitchell trade? So, yeah. And, and there's teams out there. Coming up next, I'll tell you why the Hawks would be better <laughs> if they had Brunson instead of Trey. Wow. Do we think that's true? Brunson, I DeJounte think, Murray, John Collins, Clint Capella. Wow. Trey Young, empty calories. Hawks still won the trade. Good team, uh, Yeah, those are the ones that I, I, that I don't want to see for another team. Um. Yeah. I like this question. What is a desperation trade for the Mavs? John Collins. I have John, I have John Collins written too as a de- as a death. A desperation move to me is like if a move happens, all of a sudden we think, oh no, the Luca frustration is bigger than we thought. The Luca pressure on the front office is bigger than we thought. This is a trade that happens that we say, okay, they they had to do something or else Nico's job is at stake. Something big, like something big would happen if. They didn't make some kind of Luca demands a trade. Something crazy would happen if they didn't make any kind of move. Uh, John Collins would be one. I would think I do feel like the Christian Wood for John Collins trade is like right there. And I feel like that's going to, no, I know that's literally, I mean, that's the thing. It's like that type of trade would be like, all right. I would would rather keep (laughs) Christian Wood for sure. I guess you just don't want to risk losing Christian Wood. And I have like five answers for this one. Oh, please tell me. Trading any first at this deadline. Mm. That's a level. There's a level of desperation there. If they trade any first. That's true. Yeah. If it's like a single first, not like two, yeah. not like if the all in moves yeah. that we just talked about, but any like single, first, uh, they do. A unless first. it's a debatable person. Like if they traded both first for OG, I yeah, know that's you both. I'm saying a single one. Like if they do the Bogdanovich one oh, okay, okay, or okay. they trade one pick for Jakob Pertle, you know, if they do something like that, then like that's a desperate move. Too. That's yeah. It could be desperate. Spurs want two first for Jakob Pertle. Well, I want another 30 grand on my salary. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, talk to the church. Um, Westbrook or, or uh, D'Angelo Russell? Wait, for, for desperation? Yeah. Oh, no. I don't think that's de- desperation. That's desperate. No, no, no. It's desperate to get another tag. If, if you, if you, if you des- trade for them. Desperate to save money. Desperate to not pay the tax next year. Voyage into the unknown. Desperate to get what? out from under the... the uh, if you trade lawsuit. for Westbrook, no. If you get Westbrook and you get assets back with Westbrook, I don't think that's desperate. You're not. Th- You're not. I don't think the. Lakers I actually think that's pretty. I actually think it's kind of smart. If they if they do, but if they just get Westbrook or just get D'Angelo Russell and are like, let's do the dry powder thing again. We tr- we got off of Tim and and Davis Bertans, and then all now all of a sudden we have like sixty seventy million dollars in expiring contracts. But but what it's if desperate Dal- to me? What if the Lakers don't have anything else uh, 
up their sleeve with the Westbrook, you know, picks and all this stuff. And they called Dallas and said, we'll give you a first with Russ. If you'll give us Tim Bertons and it's, you know, let's just say Reggie Bullock. And if you're, if you're Dallas, you're sitting there saying, okay, we'll swap out Tim for Russ. Bertons doesn't play. We're losing Reggie for nothing, basically. But for Josh, first. We'll st- you, get the, you get the first. We'll st- but that's what I'm saying. But you're you're obtaining that kind of valuable first from the Lakers that helps you this summer by saying, now we have another pick. Now we have four first that we could throw in there this summer because they'll gain that other Mavs pick that they can trade this summer. And like no salaries to trade. <laughs> but but that's the type of thing. It's like, yeah, you can, we send that JaVale, can we send you bail to the Lakers too? I don't think it, I don't think it's desperate depending on what assets come back. If you get us. an asset back, but if it's just for those players, they just do the deal to another. It's another move for like it's flexibility. It's flexibility. It's like, okay, flexibility for what now? <laughs> um, Brad Beal is another desperation move to me. I think that could fall into the yeah the camp yeah. For all the reasons we said yesterday, injury prone, huge. I mean, he's he's getting paid fifty seven million dollars five years from now a lot uh That's gordon lot. hayward with any of the with attached to any of the hornets guys i i don't know how we'd had to talk about hayward on here <laughs> do the guardian they would love hayward to come to dallas <laughs> there would be a lot of mavs fans that would enjoy hayward on dallas coming up let's talk about some of these guys westbrook d'angelo russell conley lowry some of these older point guards out there that the mavericks could potentially get and then What's a take that you have? We're going to share our takes that, that maybe we're in the minor, minority battle. We'll talk about that coming up. All right, Isaac Harris. Thanks for making Lockdown Mavs your first listen today. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We appreciate each and every one of you that listens and listens daily, like listens more than once a week. You're part of the Raccoon Squad. That's it. That's what yes, it, you are. That's what it takes to be part of the Raccoon Squad. We appreciate each and every one of you. You are part of this show. I want to say that too. Ross, Ross Jackson on Lockdown Saints started saying that. Like, you're part of this show. I'm like, oh yeah, it's very true. No. Like the listeners, Raccoon Squad, they're part of the show. Yeah, you are. Rank these in order of who you want the maps to trade for. Westbrook, D'Angelo Russell, Conley, Kyle Lowry. I started with I started with Conley. Think he's you the- have to, you have to factor okay, you gotta factor in two price what the trade would look like. True. Yeah. Uh I I took it just who which players I would want. <laughs> okay. If you yeah, for like basketball fit stuff. But if it's just the trade that I would want the maps to do. If it's if it's just if it's trade and everything, I think Lowry's probably the number one because he probably doesn't cost too much. You probably wouldn't have to give up too much for him. And he's Ooh, see, I put Lowry last. Interesting. Just because I think Miami's like what fifth now in the East, yeah. I don't think they're giving him up for nothing. Like they're they want something back for Lowry if they trade him. I could see the Lowry D'Angelo Russell swap, something like that. For basketball fit only, yeah. take away all the trade stuff. It's Mike Conley for me for first, hundred sure, percent. Um, then I would say Kyle Lowry. Then I would say D'Lo, and then Westbrook. I flipped Westbrook and D'Lo, but yeah. Um, with you. For trade purposes, for like which one would I pursue based on everything? And Because you look at it and say, all right, Mike Conley, you're, you'd are you have to be giving up some expiring contracts, you know, because how how is Utah going to be enticed to do the deal to get off that second year of Mike Conley's deal? Which isn't bad, but I have no clue what D'Angelo Russell's trade market would be. And they want a point guard back. It's like those moves just don't. You got it. Yeah. That I've played around so much with the whole like three team swapping out point guards. Like, is there a Minnesota, Dallas, Utah trade in there that is swapping out some point guards? Would you do Russell, Nas Reed, and Jaden McDaniels? Like, they get like Timberwolves get real desperate. They're like, all right, we'll give you D'Angelo. The they wouldn't even con- give up McDaniels for Rudy. Okay, well, we'll take him out of it. But, the, but I don't know how you make the Mavs do this then. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> can't do. You wouldn't just do Daniel Russell and Nas Reed for Dinwiddie and Bertons, right? Like you just wouldn't do that. 
No. No. So I, I don't know. Like the, I don't know. I don't know what else the Timberwolves would have to add. Could they add? Do they have any firsts? I don't think they do. Oh gosh. I think they. I think they. I think they Danny Ainge has those. They got their 2024 one, but they can't trade that till the draft. So I'm going to tie this question into the next question about a trade take that you're in the minority on. Yeah. Not to be the dead horse here because I've already been talking about it. I would pursue a Russell Westbrook trade. I if, would. If. Oh, well, assuming that one of those firsts is going to be attached. If you're getting a first back, I think. Yeah, and just because I don't think if you're trading for Russ, here's the deal. You're getting a massive expiring contract. You're getting probably one of the first round picks, and then you're getting off some long-term money. I And I don't think it's going to cost you Josh Green. And I'll, I'll go as far as saying this, and I didn't feel this way like four months ago, probably even three months ago. I actually don't think it's that bad. Like Russ coming off the bench in Dallas would be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> like... If you're telling me the difference between Russell Westbrook coming off the bench compared to Tim Hardaway coming off the bench is worth the cost of long-term money and a first-round pick, I would take that. So would you I do? think I'm in a minority. I, I think a lot of people would say, no, I'm out on Russ trades at all. But this, this works salary-wise. Would you do Russell Westbrook and one of the Lakers first? Mm -hmm. Christian Wood, Tim Hardaway, and Davis. If you if you still haven't heard back from Pensac, <laughs> it, if the DMs are closed from Pensac and you don't know Chris, anything Christian about the extension Christian Wood's stuff, agent. Now that Brad put that out there in the open and, and the Dallas Morning News about you know DMs, um, we've joked about that for months on this pod. <laughs> so, but no one knew what the joke was about. Um. I would be very interested in. I would be very intrigued by that deal. What if you could get? If, I mean, if you could get both, if you could get two firsts in this deal, you do it. Like you just do I'm, it. I'm flying to LA for as good as Christian Wood like, has been on this team. You you have you still have to upgrade in this in the off season, and then you get two first. If you could do it, I'm doing it because there's no extension. Like, yeah, I, and I'm yeah. just scared. I'm scared to death about Brunson. You know, it wouldn't be this bad as Brunson, but it's like just losing, just, him. just losing him for nothing this off season. But that's still tough, though. I mean, do you make the trade and then try to flip one of those first for like Bog, you know, Boyan? Yeah, I, where like, yeah, you could flip one of those this year to try and make the team better because the team's the team's worse, obviously. With without you're you're going from Wood and Tim Hardaway to Westbrook, like the team's worse. If you, you could, the, you could still pull off the trade with Tim Bullock Davis for Westbrook. Like I would do that trade in a first. You get a first back. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, entertain that for a second, though, of like, <clears throat> all right, I can't do it. No, I don't live on the pod. Now I got to, I'm going to nerd out about this afterwards. I think, there, <laughs> I think there's a, a way of like a Lakers, Pistons, Dallas, and, you know, you, you get, let's say there's two firsts coming back from the Lakers and it's, you know, and they're getting Christian Wood, they're yeah. getting Tim Hardaway, yeah. Bertans. You, you send one of those firsts to Detroit to get Boyan and you're, you're coming, you're coming out of, is there a world that you can come out of this with, you know, Russ Boyan and a first you obviously you'd have to include another, you know, contract in there going you'd to have Detroit, to throw another $19 million. You have to throw like, yeah. Cause you're, you're bringing back like $60 million in Russ and Boyan, right? It's going to be riveting content. I know. I'm, I'm trying to make it happen right now. Machine. Uh, let me ask you this question. Who is, who's the most likely Mav to be traded before the deadline? If you had to pick one player that you're like, he's not on the team past the deadline. Uh, JaVale McGee. I'll say Tim. I think JaVale, I think JaVale McGee is. Yeah. I, I think that that just, he, he's, he's not playing. He wants to play. And he's just not. So I think Javel in a second for John Wall. Oh, I would do. I would do that trade. <laughs> what about the? Oh, I saw somebody today. Could could you do a? So George Hill's not playing. Serge Ibaka is apparently available. George Hill and Ibaka for Javel McGee. You trade out do one. They both trade out one old guy for two. 
Oh, I'd be down for that. I know. I, I think I think both teams would do that trade. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's an interesting one. I I think I've almost I've almost got this trade. <laughs> Mavs Nick, get Bogdanovich. This is gonna work on an audio pod. Mavs get Bogdanovich and Westbrook. They're sending out Davis, Tim Hardaway, Christian Wood, and Reggie Bullock. <laughs> And they still Thanks. have to send out like seven million more. It's like this Frank trade. Nelikina. No, I mean Javel would have to be in at that point. Yeah, this trade is intense. Um what's a trade take that you're in the minority on? Trade take I'm in the minority on. The Mavericks are one big move away. But ideally okay. ideally two moves. That I, I think that a lot of people think that oh the Mavericks are just so broken. I think there's still one big move away. You get one big star in here. With these role players the Mavs have now, you're, you're we're right back. You're right back where the team was and could even be better than last year. I mean, you're, you're right so there. So you get Terry Rozier in here? No. Then that's, it's, not, that's not the one. But the two moves is second star and a big man. I, I, they just still got to like shore up that, <laughs> that big man spot if they want to really take a step <laughs> forward. But Because I don't think they're getting a, a second star that is a big man. But that's one of mine. The Mavs are still one big move away, but ideally I, two. I'll say, I'll throw this name in in there real quick. I think a sneaky target that we haven't seen connected to Dallas at all. That if if they do make another trade and Christian Woods involved in it, I think a, sne- a sneaky target would be Pirtle. Interesting. I'm down with that. I would, That'd be great. I would I would watch that one just under the radar. I think it would fit go with Luca, and it could be Dallas's way of saying we're just we're tired of this crap. Like <laughs> let's get some in here that. You know, could be our guy for Mark Cuban's around like, that cost. Mark Cuban's like, I'm just so sick of hearing Isaac Harris talk about rebounds on on my daily listen of Lockdown Maps. <laughs> um, I was he he's a name I'm I'm watching right now. I'd be yeah. My other one is that Josh Green isn't untouchable, but it's close. He's not untouchable, but man, but he, he's close. the. I still stay by the. He's the second most valuable man behind Luca right now. Yeah. That. I think he's ele- here's the thing. I think he's elevated himself enough to where he is a, a legit asset with the first round picks. That I'm looking at some of these like bigger swings yep. and saying, "All right, it's the first rounders and Josh." Yep. It's like you get two out of the three, or you get, you know, one of those three, yep. something like that. So, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what's an all-in move that you would do at this deadline with the two first-round picks. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Go make your second listen. Locked on NBA game to game. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked on NBA game to game on the Locked on NBA YouTube channel as well as the podcast feed. Go listen to Locked on NBA with me and Pat the designer today as well. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom.